Does it work? Yep, it works. So let's pick some points. For example, let's say right here, I would like to determine the derivative function, the derivative, uh, the, the value of the derivative function at this point. So what am I trying to find? I'm trying to find the slope of this line. The slope of this line will give us the rate of change of this function with respect to x at this time, at this point, at x equals negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, I don't know, negative 2.2. So I have to estimate, not easy. I'm going to say it appears like uh, 1 over 1 or 2 over 2, the same thing, but, it's, but negative. So I'll go here to negative 1 and put this point. What does this point represent? When I'm done, will be the rate of change, because I didn't graph the function yet, but this is my first point. It will be the rate of change at this point. And when I graph the function, whatever the graph of the function will be, this will represent the derivative of this function that gives the slope of the tangent line at any point where the function is differentiable. And by the way, the function is differentiable everywhere. There is no vertical tangent. There is no uh, cusp, corner. It's continuous. Okay. Then I'm going to determine the slope here. Oh, okay. Oh, zero. Zero. My second point. I'm going to determine the slope here. I don't know, maybe still 1, okay. Okay, so um, I'm going to determine here at 1. Ah, steeper, of course, than here. See, this is, the slope here is, I mean, the line here is this, and the line here is this. Of course, this one is steeper than this. The slope, of course. Okay, so I'm going to say 2 over 1. So at this point, it's 2. Okay, so then it starts decreasing, obviously. So this is smaller slope, smaller slope than this one. Ah! Look, I got to another peak or turn. Oops. Aha. Okay, one more. Of course, this is going to be a rough estimate. But I have an idea of how the derivative looks like. Okay. I don't know, maybe another negative one. So this is coming from big negative, big negative, approaching zero, positive, positive, huge positive, if you want, big positive, and then smaller positive, smaller positive, zero, and it turns negative again. So something like this, okay, it gets to zero, and then it increases, it increases, and I think that probably this is the highest, and then it will still positive, but decrease, and so on and so forth. And this is the function, and this is its derivative. Rough estimate, but this is how we think about the derivative of a function. Notice something very important. When the function has a turn, also called max min, the derivative is 0. Turn, the derivative is 0. And one other thing, any questions on this? Any questions? And we are going to use this a lot in the next chapter. Look what happens. The slope here is negative. The slope here is zero. 
and the slope here is positive. This is a typical sequence for a minimum. When the slope or the derivative is negative, the derivative is zero, the derivative is positive. Minimum. Look at this one. Derivative is positive or the slope is positive, the slope is zero, and the slope is negative. This is typical for a max. This must be the sequence. If I have positive and positive, there is no sign change. I cannot have a max. If it's negative and negative, I cannot have a min. There must be a sign change in the derivative. So when the derivative is zero, and C it changes sign for negative to positive, the function must have a minimum. When the derivative changes the sign from positive to negative, of course crossing at zero, or being undefined, it's possible too. I will discuss that. Then the function has a maximum. So just yeah. so I'm clear, the graph that you made below of the derivative, those are like the slope. Exactly. Exactly. So the slope here was 0, so I put 0. The slope here, I estimated it to be 2, so that's why it's at 2. The slope here I estimated to be at positive 1, that's why it's at 1. The slope here is 0, that's why it's 0. So these points were determined by estimating the slope of the tangent line and the slope of the tangent line gives the rate of change of the function at any point where the function is differentiable. Now, yes, any questions? Does the um, differential graph always mimic the original function, or is it just convenient this time to split it? Well, it doesn't. It doesn't really mimic. Look. Oh, yeah. Okay. It doesn't. So do not uh, assume that there is any correlation, really. It, it depends on the function. But yes, what it follows is the slope of each tangent. Yes. Okay, we do have, as we said, one definition. One definition for this. We do have two definitions for f prime of a. What does this mean? Well, when x is a. Do I have to use any of these definitions? No. I can always use f prime and then plug in a at the end. But sometimes one of these two is easier to work with than this one. I'm just going to state them and I'll stop. I know um, as I said, only my phone can... Okay, two minutes. That's, that's it. So let me just state those two. So f prime of a limit as h approaches zero, and this is very familiar, of f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h. And you can say, what did you just do? You didn't do anything. What did you do? You just plugged in a here. What's the big deal? There is none. That's exactly what I did. I plugged in A. The second definition, I think several in several situations, I cannot give a recipe, though, is more useful. Its limit as x approaches A from f of x minus f of A over x minus A. Pretty much the same thing. So this is the x and this is the A, same thing. There is no age here. Sometimes this definition is easier to work with for certain functions.